Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This is the special edition of the Hive Mind Call. <laughs> I'm going to tally up the sales for this week. Verbal commitments. We got contracts out, ready to ink. $478,000 committed to this week. Contracts out. Not a bad week, right in the middle of a recession. Three properties, uh, three acres for $199. Um, 2.5 acres for 180 and uh, one acre for 99,000 Southside San Antonio. So we're moving right along. Another big week right in the middle of a recession. That's the sell side, right? Like on the buy side, we get, we're picking up nine acres tomorrow for 325. Yeah. I didn't even include that. That's just, this is just sales. This is people committing to, to purchase property from us so far. And that doesn't even include uh, PJ's deal that he's working. You, uh, you got a commitment. Uh, today, PJ, how many acres was that for? And what was the purchase price on that? That one was uh, for 11 acres out of the um, the the hole. And so that one is about 143 if they're going for it with, um, with seller finance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a deal we're working with PJ. So I would say, let's it's, it's again, it's verbal. It's not ink yet. So we don't want to be talking too much crap. But another 143,000. Uh, 621,000 in sales this week in the middle of a recession at the height of fear money's more expensive than it's ever been you know another over a half million dollar week for the hive mind so we're moving right along guys we're in a good niche things are going very very well we're not doing anything magical we're just working our butts off so if you are putting in the work and you're out there doing it um, you're going to get some progress I know Bailey's doing it Bailey's out there he sent me a, a, quite a few deals already just today alone so he's out there looking at a lot of stuff. If you don't have any deals to look at, if you don't know what the heck to do, you know, please reach out to somebody who's here in this room right now that's actually out there doing the work, putting work. I know your Sears working his butt off. He's, he's always doing deals. If you're not doing any deals, reach, uh, reach out to somebody. If you are doing deals in this room right now and you're on camera, you know, can you please raise your hand if you're looking at stuff, analyzing stuff, getting contracts, moving things right along? please reach out to these people. Everybody in this room is, is the same. You know, they're all givers. And that's what we wanted today's episode to be about in the spirit of Christmas and the holiday. We wanted to talk about giving, um, how we use it in our personal lives, how we've used it in our business, and uh, how we've managed to turn giving into a seven-figure business. And I don't think it's going to take that long for us to hit eight figures. Um, but that's something that we want to cover heavy today. You want to go into it, Daniel? Yeah, so I, I think one of the first things we want to start off is that a lot of people, they give because they, they like, they, they feel they should, you know, and I think that's the wrong way to go about, go about giving is you, you give because you're trying to put good in the, into the world, you know, and uh, we've seen, we've seen recently that people, they feel like they've given and they've given and they weren't reciprocated in the same fashion that they, they thought they should have. And uh, me and Anthony were talking about this offline and it was one of those things where like, um, if, you give with anticipation of receiving something back. I think it's the wrong form of giving. And me and Anthony are talking about this is like, if you, if you, if you give in general, it should be just to put goodness out into the world, whether they're going to make great, great things of it or not. It's not up to us, whether what they do with the money or what they do with the opportunity we give people. Um, it's more of, we give without expect, expecting nothing in return. Um, and, as crazy as it sounds, like me and Anthony have been doing this for a long time. I mean, we talk about this all the time. Like we feel like we're one of the worst businessmen out there because we get, we give a lot. I think in the high mile, give over 130 K. I mean, Anthony in his business since he's been running, um, since he's been an entrepreneur, he gave him a lot of money away for no reason, <laughs> but what it seems like, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that's what we wanted to kind of cover today, guys, in the spirit of giving in the holiday season. Um, how does this pertain to business? How have we used it in our own business and our own personal lives? Every single year, uh, my sister started working with me. She's my main admin. So I think she started working with me about maybe seven years ago now. And uh, we were just trying to make it, you know. Um, I had a little bit of money saved up and she was working for a corporation. She was working for Burlington Coat Factory. And then she was going to be a manager at Ross. And um, she had got a dental certification. She was like, I guess I'm going to get into the medical field. And after she took her certification after a year, she said, you know, I, I'll, it's cool. I just don't want to do it. And I was like, well, why don't you come work for me? I'm a solopreneur. 
Um, I got a decent amount of capital saved up and I'm, I'm doing everything by myself. I'm working from five or six in the morning until midnight. You know, I was like, I don't know how much I could pay you. I was like, I don't know if I could commit to a salary right now. I said, but, uh, you know, why don't you just come work for me and see what happens? So we just put it on a low weekly payment. And, uh, you know, ever since then, ever since she came around, she helped me kind of organize and structure things. But one thing that comes in front of mind is that every uh, every holiday, every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, every back to school, everything, uh, we're always doing giveaways on Facebook. Um, when the hurricane hit down here by Corpus, you know, we sent a truckload and a trailer load full of food and supplies, diapers, coffee down there. And we've always found a way to like to add giving into our budget, right? Probably could have structured it better for tax purposes, but <laughs> this wasn't for financial gain. This was just for like, um, and I don't even know what you want to call it, like karmic game again. And uh, I think it really works, man. I, I'm, I'm really a believer in that kind of stuff. You know, that, you know, what you give, you receive. And also if you are, um, again, like Daniel said, you don't give to just um, to, to get anything back. But if you just get in the habit of giving, if you formulate that as a habit, as part of your business, it's really cool to see like things that come back to you, you know, the way that it pays itself back. Um, no, no entrepreneurs talk about this. It doesn't make good business sense to talk about giving things away. But um, I read a book. I actually listened to the audio probably, you know, 20 times and it's called the seven spiritual laws of success. It's by Deepak Chopra. And it's an amazing, amazing book. It, I think it changed my life in business and, and kind of the way that I perceived life in business and the way that they, they can combine. But one of the spiritual laws of success says that you can activate the law of giving and receiving by, by first giving. And at the time I was living with my sister. Right. Um, and um, he talked about how, even if you don't have anything to give, that you could pay somebody a compliment, you know, you could, you could pull a flower for somebody, you know, you can, uh, you know, just wish well wishes for somebody even silently without even telling them. And I thought that was very interesting, right? That you can, you can give non-physical things and to activate the law of giving and receiving, and then it'll come back. Right. And now we see this in business, right? So we, we started Daniel and myself, when we first started doing land and investing, we started helping new people, not thinking anything of it. We're just sharing game with people as we were learning along the ways we were new ourselves. And then those new people started coming back to us with deals. And it's like, oh, cool. That's interesting. But we, we see it everywhere. You know, we, we see it absolutely everywhere that if you're willing to share and to give with people, even when you have lack, if you feel right now, if you're in this room and you feel like you lack either, either capital or resources or anything, that if you just, if you're open to giving, like I said, it activates the law of giving and receiving, and you'll start to see it it does come back in cool ways. You're like, okay, wait a minute. You know, I used to think I had horrible luck and now I think I have great luck. Like I'm always in the right place at the right time. People are always bringing things to me. Deals are always happening. Like, I'm like, this is, this is a really, really cool space to live in and to think like, maybe, maybe it's, it's coincidence, but maybe it's, it's giving for such a long time, year over year, over year, not expecting anything in return, like Daniel said, and then watching what happens in your life, watching the magic happen, you know, the way that, that it's just, too many series of coincidences. My dad says it's God incidents. He says there's no such thing as a coincidence. It's a God incidence. And I really do feel like that. I feel like we're, uh, we're in that space right now. I feel like I'm living in that space right now. And uh, as we continue to give, we continue to see how God in the universe opens up for you and, and continues to push cool things into your life. Uh, one thing I really want to mention too is like, even if, even if you're listening to this, like you have nothing to give. Uh, he mentioned it before. It's just giving, giving um, compliments, giving um uh, was other, me and Anthony do this a lot. We both we both like resonate on this one. We'll we'll go around to places and we'll um we'll like make people smile or laugh because you don't know what people's days are going through. It's giving like a boost of energy that transfers into that person's day. And it doesn't cost you anything. It really doesn't. And uh me and Anthony do this all the time. And it's just like um we we, we call it like the rip, ripple effect. Like you, you throw a rock in a, in a lake and it goes and kind of spreads we me and Anthony are just pushing people we put we push people into have a um if they're having a rough time we just kind of push on people um today I was making uh cheesecakes for Christmas so one thing I like doing around the holidays is I'll make cheesecakes to give away to friends and family in the area and people we've known and the neighbors like that I don't know if they eat it or throw it away as soon as they walk out the door but it's something I'm putting good into the world you know you know, you know, you always hear like the, in the hood, you're like, don't, don't eat nothing that somebody gave you, that somebody made for you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to eat it or not, but they tell me they like it, but I don't know. <laughs> but it's, one of, it's one of those things where like, you really don't know, but it's just one of those things I'm, I'm putting my foot forward and trying to be friendly and hopefully 
help people through transitions. I know that your, your life goes through so many ups and downs that not every day is a good day. As much as me and Anthony have, it seems like we have a lot of good days and we're constantly happy. There's bad days that come along too. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's just that little, that little push that uh, gives people the energy to move forward. You know, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, we're, let's, let, we'll continue to, to have this um, theme throughout the, the podcast, but uh, I want to talk real quick about the Poteet deal, how, oh, that's, sure. how that's maturing. Yeah. So we posted about it in this group a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we talked about it. So the property is worth, I would say, roughly about a million cash. Uh, we got it for $600,000, $5,000 down, $5,000 a month, 0% interest. Um. The seller's mom actually gifted the, the, prop, the property to her daughter. And um, it, they've had a rough, rough time with each other. The daughter got herself into some trouble and uh, she got her kids taken away. Uh, there's, there's just a couple of things, a couple of struggles that they're going through. And the mom is, is set to get nothing on the property. It's not her property. She gave it to the daughter. So now that the, the daughter's going to have an income stream, she told the mom that she has to get out. She has to get out of the house that they're renting. She's not allowed to stay there anymore. Um, and I, we figured something like this might happen, right? Just because of the instability there. So I, I told the mom, I pulled her aside and I said, look, I understand what you guys are going through. I said, I'm going to see what I can put together for you to make sure that I put some money in your pocket as well. And again, this goes back to the giving. Like I didn't have to give her nothing. I don't owe her anything legally. I owe her nothing at all but she said I gotta move I gotta get somewhere I have a friend that, that she wants to move into in a place with me in Arizona you know I can get out of town um I just I'm gonna need some money so this week we gave her uh three thousand three hundred and fifty dollars I didn't have to give her nothing I owe her zero but again it's like she helped us put the deal together she's the one that we made the initial contact with um and she really really needs it Right. And I know that's not a good way to, to be in business, to give money like where <laughs> where you don't need. It. I, I joke about it all the time. And, and, you know, I say I'm the worst business person ever because uh, we do give a lot of money that we don't owe. You know, we, we, we hand out a lot of cash that we know where there's no spreadsheet that says that we have to give that money out or pay it out. Um, another example, I'm paying a, a guy who helped me put a deal together on another deal and he's nowhere on the contract, but he's the one that helped us piece the whole deal together. And I told him that I would give him 10,000. Um, and again, that's nothing on paper. There's nothing legally that I owe him, right? And it's $13,350 <laughs> given out that I don't owe, right? In, in the last 60 days, right before the holidays. So it's kind of just things like that, the way you put these deals together and, and the people you touch, the lives you change um, with, with dollars for us, it's a spreadsheet and it's profits and, and loss and those kinds of things. But I think sometimes what we do, it goes beyond that. You know, it, it really does. Um, uh, but on, on this deal, so we're picking it up for about 12,000 an acre. What is the math on that? 600,000 divided by, we thought it was 52 acres. It's like 56 acres now is, is what the survey says. Oh, shoot, 10,714 an acre in freaking sane. That's a steal and a half, man. And the property next door to it, they're building a 300 house neighborhood that has sewer and water. Um, so I'm valuing this property as it sits at 25,000 an acre, just because um, the property next door has sewer and water. So you still got to bring that over to increase the value, but I don't care. It's so close. I'm, I'm just, and, and again, this, this is us making up numbers. I don't even know if stuff sells for 25,000 an acre out there, but we're making new comps everywhere we go. There's a three acre track that's separate from the whole property. And uh, there's an old house on it. I mean, the house, you could probably push it over with a bulldozer. It might need a hundred thousand dollars worth of work. It looks like a two one. And uh, I'm selling that three acre track for 199,000. That's one of the commitments I got this week. So 199,000 divided by three acres, that's 66,000 an acre on that one three acre track that we're getting for 10,700 and something. So um, it's turning out to be a really good deal. I'm going to, there's another five acre track that I'm going to do for 250,000 plus 199,000. That's 449. That's eight acres out of 56. That leaves me with 48 times 25,000. 
one million two hundred plus four forty eight. One million six hundred and forty eight thousand. I'm going to take off the six hundred for the sellers, and let's say fifty thousand for engineering, knocking down trees, surveys, survey flags, all that stuff. So I'll, I'll knock off six hundred and forty eight thousand. That's a million profit on this one deal. The one, the the Poteet deal that we got a couple of weeks ago. So I just wanted to let you guys know that we're really out here doing it. It's a very, very simple game. It's a very, very simple process. We just got this lead. I want to say we got, oh, oh, actually, sorry. I, I'm going to give the wholesaler like 50,000 that, that just gave me the lead. He didn't do nothing else. He's not even an investor. He just gave me a lead. He's a realtor. So I'll give him 50 grand. So 950,000 profit. Somebody brought us, somebody brought us the buyer too, right? Yeah. So I, actually what we're doing is we are working with people that can do dispositions that can spend $500 a month. And we're having them sell the properties for us. So people are placing ads on Facebook Marketplace. They're bringing buyers. And then we're just paying them a fee. Yeah. So I told that guy I would give him 5000 for that 199 lead. And then I told him if he helped me sell two or three tracks off that deal, then uh, that I would give him a lot more. Right. Because there's a little bit of room to give. But minimum on paper, 950000 or so, minus what we might pay agents and, and wholesalers and all that. But still, in my mind, a million dollar win on a deal that we just got. Uh, maybe 45 days ago, you know, something like that. And even if it takes us another 90 days to sell out the property, 120 days, it's a million dollars on the books and, and for next year. And next year hasn't even started yet. So I don't think that 199 will close till like sometime in January. I set it for a 30 day close from now. But million dollars on the books on that one deal. Um, 54 acre track, the one in Pleasanton that we're doing in 10 acre tracks, the one that had all the tires on it. Um, that nightmare of a deal, I've got uh, three tracks sold for 10 acres, 10 acre tracks. And then the one where all the tires are sitting, that's 20 acres. Um, so it's probably gonna be a little tougher to move that. So I'm going to wait until we close, clear out all those tires. Um, but easily on that, deal, another maybe five, 550 profit. So just on those two tracks, roughly like another, you know, 1.4, 1.5 million profit for next year. Next year hasn't even started yet. So we really are doing this. We really are moving. People really are getting deals. PJ's working on a monster ass deal. That should be another 500,000 or something for the books. At least like a good 150 or 200 for PJ and his partner. Um, so lots of good stuff happening right now. Lots and lots of good stuff. We're moving right along. I know there's a lot of talk about fear and recession and all that stuff online, guys. But for whatever reason, uh, Daniel and myself, we've been saying this time and time again, is that people don't wake up in the morning and say, Hey, I'm going to go buy some land. The people that buy this stuff, they've been thinking about it for a long time. They've been saving up. It's been on the mind for months and months and months. Uh, they're not, it's not like a house where like, Hey, you know, we need something quick. The kids are getting bigger. Like we're, you know, you're in some kind of like time crunch and it kind of comes up last minute. You lose your house, you lose your job. You got to downsize. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, Hey, I'm going to go buy a $400,000 wrench, you know, tomorrow. This is something that's been on their mind forever. I think we're going to plow right through the recession. We've seen zero slowdown. If anything else, we're going faster. Yeah. And like uh, for everybody here, it's just like a lot, a lot of, a lot of the work we do, we don't see results for like 60 days. <laughs> or longer. Or longer. And it's, it's, it's kind of like working, working in the dark, hoping something will fall in your lap, but. I don't know. I guess we we keep the the car the karmic gods happy. <laughs> <laughs> keep the karma at an all time high. Yeah, but uh, for everybody here, like I said, it's not um, just keep doing the hard work. I, I don't know if you. Got, I know I posted it in every group, but I'm gonna say it again. If you don't know what you're doing, uh, this is the quote. And if I posted in the group, I love the quote. Um, I'm gonna read it because it was so good. But. If you're lost, the answer is education. If you're educated, the answer is execution. If you're executing, the answer is consistency. If you're consistent, the answer is patience. Mm -hmm. So me and Anthony talked about this because a lot of it, a lot of what we've done was we were lost at one point, didn't know what we were doing. This is when we first started and then kind of found the answers and got educated, and got consistent with the marketing. And now we're here just waiting patiently. <laughs> And it's it's kind of uh it's kind of been a long, a long hard work, but we're just waiting patiently. A lot, at least a lot of what we've done has been years in the making, definitely not overnight success, and just doing doing the right thing and doing good things. And hopefully one day we'll come back. And I think I there was a podcast I heard recently was that employees they work they work 40 hours a week to get paid the next week. Entrepreneurs work for years to get paid 
five years later, <laughs> 10 years later. And it's, it's the years you put in versus necessarily the weeks or time or hours you put in, you know? Yeah, that, that's one thing I could say about Daniel and myself. I feel like if people look at us and say, man, these guys, like, man, they're doing so good and all that. But it's like, dude, man, we put in some hours, man. Like, we put in some hours. Like, yeah. If we put in 100 hours a week for the last two years, I mean, it was nothing. And then now, right now, you know, I don't we didn't go through all the deals we're working, but I would say there's at least already two or three million in the pipe for next year. That's not including what the CRM's doing. That's not including, uh, we're starting some high level, high ticket coaching. Um, you know, I could easily see us doing 5 million next year, right? But it didn't come until after, you know, hundreds of hours of work a week. And I know it gets tired and frustrating. I know that more than anybody. And sometimes you're like, am I doing the right thing? Do I need a, <laughs> do I need a new mentor? Do I need a new idea? Do I need a new strategy? But I could promise you guys, the longer we're in land and the luckier we're getting, I mean, this is crazy. Like we're starting to get like deals that are, that could do a hundred thousand plus, like we're starting to look at those every single day. Um, and I don't think that's anything to say about us. It's just being in the right place at the right time and consistency and, and looking at these deals and helping people look at deals. And it's just like, just giving, 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 giving until you feel like there's nothing left. And um, yeah, now it seems like the receiving end looks like it's going to be crazy. Yeah. And it wasn't always like that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't always like that what's what's crazy is is that uh we're closing on a deal tomorrow and it came in from a dm so opportunities are now presenting all the time now that should be an easy 150 easy 150 on this deal and that's land you know that's the land game if you could do like i mean people struggle in, in real estate to make 100 or 150 that's a crazy flip that's probably like a 700 800 000 flip in California. Yeah, to, to make 150 grand and then land, that's kind of a small deal. I drove out to Austin today, uh, south of Austin. So I, I drove the better part of today to go look at some acreage that one of our guys has locked up. I think it's 29 acres in Cedar Creek. It's a badass area. And I think he got it for like 18 an acre. I think it's probably worth at least 40 an acre. So that would be easily another 100 right there. But they're starting to come. They're starting to come hand over fist, these land deals. Um, I think guys, what I could say for anybody here in this room, if you're trying to find momentum, if you're not in momentum yet, it really is about spending your own time and your own capital and your own energy, but also training new people. Because if, if you don't have the info, if you have the information, if you have the information in your mind, you know what to do and you're not teaching other people, I think that would, that could hold you back. That's the universe's way of saying, Hey, you need a team. You need some mentees. You need to give away the information that you have in your head. And I think that's kind of what Daniel and myself, it's, I don't, we never even talk about that, but I think that's kind of part of it is we, the reason we feel the need to give away the information is so that somebody else can learn and somebody else can feed their family. Like I could already see PJ on here, man. I could see PJ hitting six figure months every month. No problem because he has the ethic. He has the work ethic. And I know he's, he's so new. It's so funny to, that I could already see him, you know, just crushing it every single month because he's going to put in the work. You know, and even though like you put in work for a month, two months, and you don't see the results, three months, he's still putting in the work and he's very positive about it. He calls me, he's in a good mood. He's laughing. He's very, very positive. So you can already identify somebody when they're going to make it, when they're going to make it happen, you know, because it does add up. It does add up. The cash adds up, the hours add up. And then you feel frustrated. You're like, what the hell am I doing with my life? You know, your friend's asking you too, like, are you sure that shit's going to work out for you? <laughs> <laughs> but you got to keep doing it. You know, you got to be crazy enough to keep doing it. And those are the people that make it. So yeah, if, you, if you're struggling for, for momentum, uh, offer to teach new people. That's my biggest piece of advice. It does something for your mental game too. Has, have anybody in here ever heard of the, the law of 33? No. What is it? What is it, Anthony? So it goes that you, you want to have three qualities of people in your life, right? Three, three, the dynamic of three different types of people, 33%. Um, one is people that are on your same level, that are exactly where you are in business and in life. And then the other is 33% uh, of the people are below you, like they're behind you. So you want to teach them, you want to mentor them. And then the other 33% of people in your life are where you want to be already. And that's how you have a, a well-rounded like sphere of influence. You're helping somebody. You're with people that are right there with you doing it. And then people that are where you want to go. 
And that's how you kind of maximize your, your time on this planet. One thing that's crazy about teaching is that you become a better, you become a better at what you do by teaching. One of the reasons why we, we love doing this and we kind of like talking, like Anthony loves talking to sellers because you got more opportunity to talk to sellers. He gets to hone his craft every opportunity. Not everybody gets to talk to million dollar owners that own million dollar properties all the time. I mean, the only people that do that are niche specific. So if you're doing, if you're doing what you love and you can really hone your craft to on uh, what you're actively trying to do, it makes you uh, more skilled, you know, it makes you more effective of what you do. That's something we talked about uh, this week. Uh, PJ said that his favorite thing is teaching, that he loves it. We talked about that this week. We were on a call or something where I don't even know what happened. And Daniel messaged me. He's like, dude, PJ's a natural leader. I'm like, yeah, he sure is. You know, he's brand new himself, but he's putting in the work. He's getting a lot of progress. He's working on a couple of giant checks. And uh, yeah, he has that in him that where he wants to give. So again, going back to the giving thing, the spirit of the holiday, the season, even I know it's a, the hardest thing to give when you don't have, right? That's when it's the most difficult, but that's yeah. when it's also the most important time to give. That's when it's the most important time to give. When, when, when you have not activated the law of giving and receiving and you feel like there's nothing to give, that's when it's the most important. That's when it's the most important time. Um, when, since my sister started working for me like seven years ago, eight years ago, we did hit some slick spots. We hit some low spots, big time. And we'd never stopped giving. We never stopped giving. You know, sometimes when I saw us, like we were like, the coffers were getting pretty low. And I saw her post on Facebook, like, hey, if anybody needs back to school help, if anybody needs this and that, just reach out to us. And I'm like, let's roll, let it roll, run the play. <laughs> <laughs> right let it roll let's do it it's, it's worked thus far let's not slow it down and uh yeah i think since we've had that uh, that energy and that philosophy it's been serving us well like i said and now being on the receiving end it seems like like it only makes sense but i kind of see the magic behind it like it's it, i can't show you on a spreadsheet what it's done but i can show you like just how i said like just i'm always in the right place at the right time things are always happening good for us like it's too much sometimes. <laughs> I even, uh, I've prayed before for God, like just slow down the blessings for a minute. Like, let me organize and make good use of what we already have before you keep on pouring it on, you know, and God will slow it down. He'll turn the tap down to give you some time to recoup and, and uh, uh, you know, kind of put things back together before you, you, you keep on receiving more. But I think that's another part of, of the reason why you should share, right? So right now, Daniel and myself, the biggest, like, outpouring of God has been like, we have like just insane amount of leads, insane amount of deal flow, so much so that we can't even comp it all. We can't even look at it all. Today, I reached out to Bailey. I'm like, dude, I got a lead, man. I was like, I need some help. I was like, I don't even know what to do with this lead. It's not even my, my forte, you know, it's an infill lot, you know, help me out. So he comped it. He looked it up. He told me what to do. And bam, I pushed it out. We didn't sign nothing. He didn't sign nothing with me, but if I sell it, you better believe he's going to get the check, a real nice check. Right. And that's just how Daniel and myself operate. Um, I say that nobody's allowed to touch my deals without getting paid, <laughs> you know, because uh, we would never let somebody give us something without us giving them something back or paying it forward. Like there's no way for us to bring it into our accounting um, unless we make sure that somebody else gets blessed, you know, for what we do. I've had a bunch of people reach out to me and say, hey, man, how can I ever pay you back? And I'm like, you don't pay me back. You pay it to, you pay it to somebody else. It doesn't come back to me. It goes somewhere else. And that activates that law of giving and receiving. And it's cool to play in that space. If you don't talk about it, if you don't think about it, if none of your friends think about it or talk about it, it's just a really cool place to be. It's a really fun space to be. Like I said, it's kind of just magic. It, it makes life worth living to see it happening and, and being activated in your life. It's like, it can't always be this good, can it? But it really can. It really can. And then you'll see if you get to a sticking point, which you inevitably will, right? You'll get to a sticking point or a tough spot. It seems like you got the cheat code to get out of it based on all the karmic, you know, debt that you've been paying and all the paying it forward that you've done. Yeah. So for everybody here, like I said, we appreciate you coming out and believing in us. We appreciate the work you guys are doing. You guys uh, make us better and make us do better. Um, we really appreciate everybody participating and working with us in general. We appreciate everybody coming out, man. The, I know uh, it's holiday season, so we really want you to spend time with your family. You don't know how long they, you'll have them, 100%. It's, it's crazy the scenes, but you think uh, your, your parents and your siblings are there forever. But the truth is, you never know. 
So uh, for everybody here, go spend time with your with your loved ones. Go go build memories with your kids and um, make a difference in the world. Don't slow down, guys. Don't slow down. Don't get tired. Do not relax. Go harder. I can promise you, <laughs> without offering you cash back, that if you go harder, you're going to get business right now. You're going to get leads. You're going to get deals. People are buying. If you're doing it by yourself and it feels tough, team up with somebody else. Quite a few people in their hand raised, and quite a few people in this room have raised their hand and said, reach out to me. I will help you. They're in momentum. Um, if you don't have anything to sell, let's say you've, you've been trying to get deals for a while. You've been trying to get sellers on the phone. Nothing's happening. We have properties to sell. I mean, we have almost 10 million under contract right now. We have properties to sell. Reach out to Daniel or myself, set up a buyer campaign. You can do it for free. I recommend you have about 500 bucks a month to spend. If you personally do not have $500 a month to spend, reach out to somebody in your network and say, hey, I know this guy that has $10 million worth of land. He said he would pay us if we sell some deals. Uh, we need a couple hundred bucks. If you can't fundraise $500, we need, you need to call me personally and I'm going to help you do some fundraising. You should, anybody in this room should be able to personally fundraise 500 bucks. Let's get you, let's get some deals flowing into your life. Even if you're only working on the sell side and moving deals, that will bring some cash into your pocket. That'll bring momentum and energy into your life so that you can start to actually do more deals, do more on the acquisition side, connect with other people to help you guys get into momentum. You have to connect with other energies of people that are already moving. You guys be go-givers. Um, you never give with the intent to receive. You just give, give, give so that you can activate the law of giving and receiving. Weird, magical things will start happening in your life. I promise. I've seen it. I've seen it a lot. All right, guys. Thank you for coming out here. Merry Christmas. We'll see you all soon. See you next week. Bye.